Hello and welcome back to the No Filter Podcast. Well, it's been a while since we've had a episode, so we're back and we're back with a bang. So as always, we've got me, Lou, so I am one of the trainers at Gwent Engage, and behind the scenes we've got my partner in crime, Lisa, who does all the wonderful techie stuff and was our, well, one of our um, stars in the LGBTQ uh, podcast that we did the last time. So Lisa is behind the scenes doing all the tacky stuff. And um, we've got a very exciting episode today for you. So this um, episode, we are joined with some of the guys from Mike. So would you like to introduce yourselves? Uh, we've got three of them, so they're all going to fight now. Who's going to Who's going to go first? <laughs> we try not to fight in public. Um, I'm Jo. <laughs> I'm Jo, and I'm one of the Healthline advisors on the Mike Healthline. Nice to meet you. And I'm, I'm Elaine, another helpline advisor. And I'm Al, a, a, another helpline advisor. <laughs> there we go. So I suppose we'll kick it off by explaining exactly who you are, who are Mike and what do Mike do? Mike are a children and young people's helpline and we're open every day from 8 in the morning till midnight every single day of the year, including Christmas Day and bank holidays. We're there for young people up to the age of 25 and they can contact us by phone, text or instant message. Um, We are here as advocates and advisors. We're not kind of like a listening service, but... You come to us and we'll try and help you sort out whatever the issue is. Or if we can't do it, we can try and find somebody who will do. You know, that's kind of like in a nutshell. But we do cover a lot of issues. That was what I was going to ask. What sort of things do you and can you help young people with if they kind of phone phone the helpline? Well... We're not experts or specialists in any field. So, for example, we're not mental health specialists. Um, We've got a team of about 12 to 15 advisors, and we've all got our own specialisms because we've all got life experience, we've all got professional experience. We all come with our own specialisms. But the whole idea of the Mike Helpline is really that you can come through to us with anything. You can come, the problem, no problem is too small or too big. We yeah. don't pertain that you know. We don't think that we can answer and sort out every problem, but we'll always do our best. And so people come through to us with a multitude of issues from mental health, sexuality, gender, money, um, bullying, self harm. Suicide, unfortunately, we get a lot of, mm. you know, crisis calls. This, I, I don't think there's any issues that young people don't come through to us with, really. Yeah. And I say, we're not experts in all of them. We don't pretend to know the answers and, and to be able to support and be specialists about all of them. We're very happy to say, hang on a minute, there's a far better organisation than us that deal with this, let us put you in contact with them, because we're not precious about it, you know, we've all, we all want to help in the best way that we can, so we'll do the best we can, but we don't sort of think to ourselves, you know, we're not passing them on to, the, to another organisation, we will, if there's somebody else is better to support that young person, we've got no problem in passing them on to that organisation or supporting them to get support from them. Yeah, Fab, and that's the same as us within Gwent Engage as well. You know, it's very much that multi agency approach, isn't it? If there's somebody that can offer that support and is a specialist in that support, then they're obviously going to be the best people to offer that young person that that support. Um, I was going to ask have you seen um, an increase in um, young people contacting um, the helpline since COVID and all the lockdown situations? So I think we saw um, quite a steady line throughout, didn't we, that um, mm. really things didn't change too much, that there was a, a continued use of the service um, despite people having a very a massive change in their lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Um, the style of the, the sort of content of, of issues that came through um, changes over time anyway. 
So there was um, there was a sort of spike in coronavirus related um, issues as um, different restrictions came in and different issues were raised. Yeah. Um, but all sorts of normal issues continue to affect young people despite COVID nineteen mm-hmm. um, issues with school or with bullying or um, uh, with their mental health or housing. Um, and sometimes there's this underlying current that the coronavirus has impacted on um, service availability, um, mm-hmm. which the young person might not always um, be able to recognise, but um, it might always be an underlying uh, part of the conversation there. Mm. Um, yeah, I'd agree. I mean, as Al said, all the normal issues continued. You know, yeah. things didn't change in that respect. But then we had the additional, all the fears, all the misinformation, people coming through to us. And I think we did a really good job of keeping ourselves up to date. Because like every other organisation, like every other person in the world over the past 18 months, it's been one change after another change after another change, isn't it? So we have to keep on top of things because young people, parents, carers, professionals even have come through to us and said, I'm just so confused about where we are now what are we allowed to do am I allowed to have my grandchildren overnight you know I usually look after them things like this and so we had to be really on the ball in keeping up to date with things in in, you know with with us with the Welsh government legislation obviously so that we were able to give the young people whoever came through to us the right information at the right time because as we all know two weeks later it could change couldn't it a month later so I, I think, look, like Al said as well, low mood was a, a big one with young people. You know, that coming, mental health is always a big problem, but there was a lot of low mood, which yeah. you know we all felt, didn't we? There wasn't one person probably in this country, young person, child or adult, that wasn't affected in that way. So we, I think that was the biggest increase mm. in contacts that we had. Yeah, yeah. Go, going back to that, to the low mood thing, I think one thing we did see, or at least on contacts I took, there's a lot of um, young people in first in university, whether they be at home or in in the campus, they were really struggling because you know they got a whole change to start with, then they're trapped in their room. Mm-hmm. You know they can't, they couldn't even go out for a walk or anything like that, or they couldn't mix with with all the normal things like they would do when they first going to university. And even when they were at home, like that age, were so affected, despite the fact they actually spend half their life on the phone anyway, it's like it was too difficult to deal with at that time. So it's like trying to find things for them to do. And we do, I think we've done a lot of encouraging, like, you've got to go for your daily walk, you know, little things like that. But while you're out, I mean, one thing I've focused on, you've got your phone, start taking some photos or something, something to occupy them and make them go out because they just yeah. don't understand sometimes that just being outside is so very good for you. It does actually help, but having to something to focus on, whether it be exercise or set yourself little goals, that that seemed to that settle down a bit now, but that seemed to be quite throughout COVID. For the older young people, that's been quite heavy on their minds, you know, struggling that way. Yeah, I mean, well done, guys, for making it through the whole COVID lockdown situation. Because like Joe says, not only are you trying to offer the support to the young people that contact the helpline, it's something that we were all going through. So it was important to kind of try and look after our own mental health while still offering that support to young people. Um, which you know I'm not gonna lie at times was really really difficult because it was something nobody else had ever been through before we've never gone through like you know a worldwide pandemic like this before so we don't know what we were doing but like hats off to be able to continue offering that support to young people is just just amazing So what is the difference between um, support that Mike can offer compared to other helpline services? So um, so Mike offers, as Joe mentioned earlier, um, an information advice and advocacy service. 
So the normal sort of work that we provide, um, information and advice, if somebody called up the helpline and they wanted um, direct contact details um, for a local service in their area, we'd be able to provide that. Um, for instance, if they were looking for um, the, the local mental health support in, in their city or in their town, we'd be able to provide them with contact details and maybe put them in touch directly with that service. If they were looking for specific advice on a situation, say around relationships or bullying, um, we'd be able to talk through their issues with them um, and help them make a change if they were looking to see something different in their lives. Um, or uh, particularly, we like to concentrate on um, a bit of a buzzword on the growth mindset, um, which essentially is, is the concept that the brain is a muscle and it can be trained into thinking um, along a different path or change the way that you see a situation in order to develop yourself as a character and to build your resilience. So that's something that we do an awful lot with, with young people on the helpline is um, looking to build resilience and looking to help them to see something change in their life rather than just as a passive listening service. And then the third thing that we offer advocacy is um, quite different from any other helpline that's available for young people in Wales. Um, and advocacy in a nutshell is somebody who's willing to speak up on your behalf, um, to use your words, to put your thoughts and views and wishes and feelings forward. Um, and that can be really directed at any place. What we tend to do is often direct them at places like schools, um, social workers, um, people in the health service, if the young person doesn't feel they're able to raise their voice or they don't feel that they're listened to, um, that's something that they can appeal to us to come in and help on a sort of professional basis to come in and raise their views, their wishes, their feelings for them. That's amazing and advocacy is, is massive really isn't it with young people, really helps to you know support them and, and get their voices heard in situations that they might not necessarily feel comfortable doing it themselves because their voices are very much important in making decisions about them and, um, you know, getting our support and advice. So, yeah. And so, something I'll just add quickly is we always try first is to help them self-advocate. So I think mm. it's, it's always important that the young person feels that their voice should be heard. Yeah. Um, so we'll always try that strategy first to see if they can um, raise their own voice. So I want to ask, where does Mike come from? What is the origin of that of the name? Uh, Mike is short for microphone in Welsh, um, which obviously a microphone, as we all know, as we're doing a, a podcast here. <laughs> <can help. laughs> um, Mike Helpline is run by an organisation called Promo Cymru. Promo Cymru is a charity and social enterprise. Um, Promo Cymru, I think, if I'm right, has been around for about 30 years. Please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. It's about <laughs> 30 years. And Promo Cymru runs a range, a, a variety of projects. Um, so they've got the Make Helpline. They've got, um, they run another three helplines, which are adult advocacy helplines. They also have um, own and maintain the Ebervale Institute. Um, mm. So they've they've got a multitude of things on the go i think actually at the moment they're also providing training to the samaritans we just found out we just found out that as well so obviously that's a huge thing for us the samaritans is a massive organization that's been around a long time so that's you know that's fantastic that we are in that position to be providing training to the, to the samaritans um the yeah. mike helpline itself has been running for the past 12 years. But due to COVID, we decided, because obviously the last two years has just been a blip, hasn't it? We've decided we're going to celebrate our 10-year anniversary this year because it's a bit like, you know, you've had your 50th birthday and that didn't really count today. I'm, I'm no, no. So we've just been <laughs> looking out those last two years and we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary um, this year. Um, it's a Welsh government-funded project 
And whilst promo company has had it for the past 10 years, it doesn't mean that we've had it for 10 years and not had to fight to keep it. Um, every couple of years, it goes out to tender and however many other organisations can bid for the helpline. And we've been really lucky that we've been able to offer what, obviously, what Welsh Government are looking for, um, you know, to provide that all access service for all young people in Wales. I mean, the only thing you have to be to contact well, you know, the only eligibility to contact the Make Helpline is you've got to live in Wales and you've got to be up to the age of 25. You don't have to have a social worker, you don't have to have any other special circumstance there. So you've just got to be a young person that lives in Wales and up to the age of 25. And I think, you know, that's one of our selling points as well because a lot of services, they will support young people up to the age of 18. Well, as we all know, yeah. it, it, problems don't stop at the age of 18, do they? They go on. <laughs> they go on. Yeah. Well, they do life. So I think that's one of our, you know, our real, se- you know, our selling points is that we still offer that support, that information, advice and advocacy to young people up to the age of 25, not 18. So that's where we came from. And that's where the name came from, Make, like I say, short for microphone in Cymraeg, um, and obviously being advocacy providers to young people, being able to make sure that a young person's voice is heard, that's yeah. the, the reasoning behind it. Aww, I, I like that. That sounded very good. I, like I mean, that. I wasn't there, but I'm presuming that was what it was all about. <laughs> it was good to use, I checked. <laughs> Amazing. So if a young person is to contact the helpline, what is the confidentiality policy in regards to them contacting? Where does that stand? Um, So if a young person contacts the helpline um, and they relay some information to us that we feel is is necessary for us to explain our confidentiality policy, um, we do use appropriate language depending on on the sort of um, contact um, we think we're having with them to explain that everything that they tell us on the helpline is confidential, just between us um, and them. The only time we um, have to share that information is if they tell us something that uh, we feel is um, leading to them or somebody else being at immediate risk of harm. Um, So we explain that as early as possible in the process so that they understand um, and it means that um, everybody's sort of um, lines of communication are open then for the rest of that contact. They understand where we sit and, and um, we know that they can tell us whatever they need to in confidence. Yeah, fab. And I, you know, I guess that's the same with every agency really, isn't it? In, in regards to kind of confidentiality, it's the same with us, you know. It's confidential unless obviously the young person's at risk of harm or somebody else's. Um, fab. So we like a little bit of social media here in Gwent Engage. We're on every single so social media platform we can get on. We think we're cool, we're not, but you know <laughs> we're on every single social media platform that we can get on. So what uh, have you got? Have you got any social media um, platforms that you're on? Tag away, plug away. This is your time to shine. <laughs> Don't play around. You're the digital expert. You know. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you, yes, yeah, so we're on, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I don't think we have TikTok yet. Um, oh, yeah. The comms team are very into TikTok, but I don't think we have a mic TikTok. Um, we've got our own YouTube channel, and there's some fantastic videos on there as well. I'd... I'd um, definitely signpost people to go and watch some of the the helpful videos on the youtube channel um but you can find everything by going to the um the social media of your choice um and then it's normally some derivative of um forward slash mike dot cymru brilliant um again we'll pop all the um social media tags and everything underneath the podcast so young people are able to find you really easily So how can young people contact you guys on the helpline? What do they need to do? They can phone, text or instant message. We are open every single day of the year from 8 o'clock in the morning until midnight. 
including all bank holidays, Christmas, all that sort of thing. We have a Welsh Welsh service as well as English, and if they want to speak in Welsh, they suddenly just press the button on the, on the helpline to speak to a Welsh speaker as well, because we do cover the whole of Wales. That's brilliant. And is there one number for the whole of Wales? Yes. We, yeah, we've 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 just got the we've got the one number, and like we, we're on a helpline, so it goes through to the next available person. And it's also free. Don't forget that it doesn't cost the young people anything. And do you want the number? Yes, please. The phone number: oh eight oh eight eight oh two three four five six and the text number is eight four zero zero one and if they want to contact us through instant message they just need to go to the website which is www.mike.com.cymru c-y-m-r-u and it's all very clear on there how they contact us but we'll also pop it underneath um, this podcast as well, so we'll have all the numbers and everything under, underneath as well. So, yeah, thank you ever so much for um, for joining me this morning. It's been a pleasure thank for you. having us and, and having making giving us the opportunity to have our voice heard because, you know, we need to get out there. A helpline's never going to be the first port of call for somebody that needs support. There should always hopefully be family, friends and, and a, a community to support a young person. But we are part of our community. We are there. Not everyone has somebody to support them. Yeah. So, no, we are there as one of their choices. So, cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye.